everyone, and just like that, it's raining outside. That's why we're inside in our studio. We have a few things for you, so let's get cracking. First of all, the great backyard bird count is February 16th to the 19th. Please find just 15 minutes on one of those days to count birds and submit your checklists with eBird. While it looks like not so many people have seen any evening grosbeaks around, but Mary Webster in Oregon has about 25 of them. She's had them for a few weeks now. So if you're in that area, keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully they'll make their way here soon as well. And thank you all for sharing your observations of frozen or napping woodpeckers. That seems to be a rather common behavior, not just among downy but hairy woodpeckers. Claire in California has a Natal's woodpecker. I've never seen one before that displays the same kind of behavior. Check out how similar Natal's and downy and hairy woodpeckers look. Anyway, we summed up all your comments and here are the three things that were common amongst all of you. The first one is woodpeckers freeze up completely when there is a predator around, especially a hawk. Then it's woodpeckers hitting a window and just being stunned and kind of recovering from that. Third, and this is something I watched last weekend when I was doing my project feeder watch count, the woodpecker was just hanging out, no predators, no window collisions. It was just enjoying itself. And one last thing, we're noticing that there are a lot of people who have live cams with our bird feeders. And you know, I really enjoy popping into different ones, especially when they're in a different location, checking out different birds, different backyards, different weather. It's so much fun. So if you know of anyone who has a live cam with our bird feeders, please share that with us. We will collect all the links and then share with everyone to enjoy birds from various locations. Carol from our customer care department is wondering whether climate change is affecting birds' migratory patterns. She, as well as many of you who she talks to on the phone, are noticing grackles, red-winged blackbirds and starlings at your feeders a lot earlier than in previous years. Hi, Carol. Yes, according to a growing number of scientific studies, climate change is definitely affecting the migratory patterns of more and more bird species. Temperatures are getting warmer earlier in the year, and both the timing of their travels and the pathways are being greatly affected. Migrating birds are being faced with increased storm frequency, lowered water tables, higher drought frequency, sea level rise, and habitat shifts all resulting from climate change. Just as an example, white-faced ibises in California normally rely on ponds and marshes as stopping points to rest and to rehydrate. But because of climate warming, many of these wetlands have dried up. So when the birds touch down on their usual favorite spots during migration, only to find them dry, they immediately take off again and use up valuable energy trying to find suitable replacement stops. Another result of climate warming is that some species, like black-throated blue warblers, are heading north a week earlier than they used to decades ago, and they end up facing fall spring weather and or an absence of the usual food resources they need to raise young on their breeding grounds. There's increasing evidence that climate change is causing more and more violent weather systems, such as hurricanes, tornadoes, and wildfires, all of which can force birds off course and even result in direct mortality. As for whether any of this is responsible for you seeing more nuisance birds at your feeders is not yet known. My guess is that it's due to some other factor. Even though it's full on winter here and we are enjoying all the winter outdoor activities, I am already thinking about gardening and planting especially because my mother is coming to visit us from Belarus this summer and every time she shows up here she tries to plant something in my garden. She's an avid and a really good gardener. The problem is that she lives in Belarus and we're in Canada. Remember how last year we had to cut down one of the invasive species that she planted years ago? Well, this year I am a lot more prepared for my mom's visit thanks to Cornell because they have just sent a beautiful poster of native plants that attract all our North American birds. 
I've printed this poster for our office use because many of my colleagues are into gardening as well but I also have one in my house and I'm going to circle all the plants that are native to our area so when my mom is looking to buy certain plants here she'll know what to get according to a number of scientific studies homosexual behavior has been recorded in over 130 species of birds they range from tiny hummingbirds to woodpeckers to parrots and waterfowl however to be fair it's not easy for evolutionary ecologists to explain such behavior if only because it does not fit the usual mold of pursuing reproductive goals. After all, virtually all wildlife species, whether birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects, basically have one aim in life, however short that life might be, and that's to contribute as many offspring bearing their genes to the next generation. But it's hard to apply that kind of thing to Schven and magic the world-famous gay penguin couple at the Sea Life Aquarium in Sydney, Australia. These two male Gen 2 penguins earned fame in 2018 after hatching out their first chick from a spare fertilized egg given to them by zookeepers after noticing them trying to incubate a rock. That penguin chick, nicknamed Schwengik, is now grown up and raising a family of her own. Meanwhile, Schwen and Magic have been busy raising a second chick and likely many more in the years to come. Today is F for fish crows. They look like standard crows, but don't be fooled. They are such connoisseurs of coastal living and true seafood aficionados. They are smaller, but some say sassier than American crows. But the two of them are actually not that easy to tell apart unless you see them next to each other. Fish crows tend to have more of a nasal collar and they hang out along southeastern coastline of the United States. If there is a beach party, you can bet they will be on the guest list, often sneaking away with all the shrimp cocktails. Their diet is quite eclectic. Seafood is their favorite, but basically anything that washes up on the shore, soggy french fries included. Their migration patterns, well, they approach migration like a stroll in the park. When the weather cools off, they might move inland and south a bit, but don't expect them to pack their bags for a long haul. They love their beach life and won't give it up for anything. And when it comes to romance and parenting, fish crows are a perfect team. They build their nest up on treetops and both parents take care of their young. Well, that's it, that's all for now. Please share any live cam links that you know of or any other bird observations that you see. It's always interesting for us to see what everyone else is experiencing. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.